Hi, this is Mark Tube speaking. You're watching Sporting Icons. You don't need to be anywhere else. Okay, so I've just watched an interview with Frank Warren on IFL TV, interviewed by Umar, IFL Umar. Now, not for the first time, I do get the impression that Umar doesn't like Joshua and he's entitled to like him or not like him, but that's just my perspective. I get the impression that he doesn't actually like Joshua. Who knows, maybe he does. Now, Frank Warren, he raised a lot of good points in this one where they were talking about the Joshua Usyk situation, which is Anthony Joshua didn't do anything different in the entire fight from round number one to round number 12. He didn't do anything different. He, he didn't seem to change any kind of game plan when it was obvious from the first couple of rounds, his game plan weren't working. What you don't do is outbox an elite boxer like Alexander Usyk. What you do is, when you're taller with a bigger reach, and of course you're a lot stronger and more powerful, you keep your opponent at bay with your left arm. He's an orthodox fighter, so you keep him at bay with your left arm, you use the jab, and you follow through with the right hand with a bit more regularity. So we can agree with that with Frank Warren, unless of course, following the previous video, Anthony Joshua did in fact injure his right arm, and of course he went into the fight hampered due to his right arm. Again, just to clarify, just to clarify, because a lot of people were just reading the title rather than what it was I was saying in the video. I never said that Anthony Joshua has injured his arm. It's a fact that he's injured his arm. It's a fact that Eddie Hearn told Spencer Fearon. That's a fact. But again, I do have to say, why would Eddie Hearn say that if it wasn't true? Okay. Anyway, but it is what it is. And as I said before, if you're injured, don't fight. Simple as that. If you fight then I don't really need to be hearing about any kind of injuries, okay? Anyway, now, Frank Warren, he did say that he spoke to Tyson Fury during his whole fight, and he said to Tyson Fury, imagine that was you in there with Joshua, what you would have done to Joshua. And apparently Fury is gutted about the result, because obviously he wants to fight Joshua for undisputed. Well, my answer to that, and let's be brutally honest here, is, well, whose fault's that? Why was Anthony Joshua fighting Alexander Usyk? because he was supposed to be fighting you, Tyson. That's why. Fury fans don't like hearing that, but that's how it was, okay? If Tyson Fury had have manned up and fought Anthony Joshua, because there was get-out clauses, John Fury admitted to about all this as well. Even Tyson Fury said in the beginning it was 20 million, then later on changed it to 80 million. What story can you believe? Well, it's entirely on you. Either way, there was get-out clauses, but he didn't do it. So that's why Joshua fought Usyk. Now, again, for Frank Warren to say that it's a shame that we're probably never going to get to see Fury and Joshua, well, I said this even while they're all negotiating, because there was parts in the beginning of the negotiations that the WBO were thinking about stripping Anthony Joshua and putting it on the line for Usyk versus Joyce. You guys will remember that one. And I said at the time, multiple times actually, if necessary, Fury, Joshua, vacate all your belts and fight each other anyway. Because let's be honest, Fury and Joshua are bigger than the belts. Either one of them individually don't need the belts. But of course, if you've got all the belts and, and it is going to be for undisputed, it's two Brits, of course. That makes a mega fight into a colossal fight, doesn't it? Of course. And of course, it's going to generate a, a, a lot more interest globally which of course is going to put a bit more money in their pocket. So of course we understand that. But at the same time, didn't really need it. So for Frank Warren to say that because Joshua no longer has the belt, then that means it's unlikely he's ever going to fight Fury again. I don't really understand that. But at the same time, what Frank Warren is saying is he doesn't believe Fury, or sorry, he didn't believe Joshua can do anything different in order to get the belts back from Alexander Usyk. Now, to go back onto the point of what Frank Warren was saying to Fury, which is, imagine that was you in there with uh, Joshua, imagine what you would have done. I've heard quite a few people say that. I think people are actually forgetting that the Tyson Fury that fought Vladimir Klitschko, as in the pure boxer, the way that Alexander Usyk fights, the pure boxer, is no longer Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury now is Tyson Fury Kronk style. That's what he is. As long as he's got Sugar Hill in his corner, it's Kronk style. Do you think Kronk style, Tyson Fury, beats Anthony Joshua? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But at the same time, I mean, who knows? Maybe if the Joshua fight was to get made at some point, then maybe he would bring back 
Peter Fury. Maybe they will mend the bridges. Maybe bring in um, Ben Davison again. So he can do that kind of style again. Don't get me wrong, Tyson Fury, he can adapt anyway with or without a trainer, let's be honest. But the thing is with um, that particular style of Kronk, I mean, we've seen Kronk fighters fight Anthony Joshua. Charles Martin was a Kronk's trained fighter. Call it what you like, he was. Vladimir Klitschko was a Kronk style fighter. He was trained by the late, great Manny Stewart. Anthony Joshua, of course, beat both of those. But... At the same time, just because he beat those doesn't mean that uh, he would beat Tyson Fury. Of course not. Tyson Fury is um, a heap better than Charles Martin, of course. And he's a bit more mobile than a Vladimir Klitschko. That's for sure. Doesn't punch as hard as Klitschko, but he's a lot more mobile than Klitschko. So maybe a Tyson Fury Kronk style would absolutely decimate Anthony Joshua. Maybe. Maybe. But even then, after this so many times across so many videos, Joshua seems to struggle with shorter opponents. When he's fighting taller opponents, he tends to have more success. And you don't get much taller than Tyson Fury. Albeit, no tall fighter moves as well as what Tyson Fury does. Tyson Fury, if he was to abandon the Kronk style for a bit and go back to how he fought um, Klitschko, yes, it'd be very, very difficult for Anthony Joshua to pin, trap, and stop. Tyson Fury. And I've said it for quite a few years now. For me, I always saw that fight as Tyson Fury on points or Anthony Joshua by knockout. I always said that. I never said that Anthony Joshua beats Tyson Fury on points. And I've never really said that Tyson Fury knocks out Anthony Joshua. I've always said that this fight is a 50-50. As much as Tyson Fury has been annoying me lately, I can't take anything away from his in-ring ability. None whatsoever. But is the fight dead? Well, let's hope not. I hope Frank Warren is wrong on that one. But as I said before, this could have been Joshua Fury. It could have been. Tyson Fury could have left that ring on Saturday night holding every single belt in his possession, become the first heavyweight champion to own all four belts at the same time, thus becoming undisputed. The last undisputed champion, of course, Lennox Lewis. But of course, he had three because the WBO wasn't deemed as a legitimate world title back then. Now it is. Fury would have been, could have been, the first undisputed four belt holder. Could have been, would have been, who knows what could have been. Because at the end of the day, we're not getting this fight, are we? We didn't get this fight. We should have been getting that fight. And for me, people ask what my problem is. My problem is, we shouldn't have been seeing Joshua versus Usyk. We should have been seeing Joshua versus Fury. And Fury had get out clauses, but didn't activate them. Hopefully he, hopefully, he doesn't slip up against Fury, um, Wilder. Hopefully you don't, but you never know. Because let's be honest, ain't nobody out there really wants to see Usyk versus Wilder. Let's be honest. And if we did, we know who's winning that one quite comfortably. Alexander Usyk. Anyway, that's my thoughts. If you drop me yours, click thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you on the next video.